Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us and sorry for the delay. There is an awful lot of activity going on in our city right now as far as the weather is concerned. Um, we are, I guess, experiencing the rain a little bit earlier and in a lot more volume than what we had anticipated for today. And so um, we'll speak to this very shortly with our officials who are really in the field seeing this and working with our citizens um, to stay safe. But there's a lot of flooding that's of a uh, big concern to us right now here in the city of Columbia. Um, the first thing I'll say is safety first. And so we're really encouraging citizens to uh, get home and shelter in place due to some of the major flooding that we're seeing at some of the arteries in, in Columbia and also the surrounding areas in the county. Um, we'll speak to some of those specific areas. But today I have with, I'm city manager, Teresa Wilson, of course, but I have our emergency management director, Harry Tinsley, uh, of course, Columbia Richland Fire Chief, Aubrey Jenkins, and our public works director, Robert Anderson. So we'll try to give you some pertinent information. Um, I'll start with, please stay safe, pay attention to um, your families, your neighbors, the elderly, pets, Go ahead now and begin to um, prepare for the evening while there is still daylight. Um, but we want to just draw the attention to everyone about the sheer amount of water that we're seeing already today. So with that, I'm going to let Harry speak to that, Director Harry, Harry Tinsley, as far as some of the, the rain that's forecasted and still projected and the, the maximum winds that we're expecting as well. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as you see, our emergency operations center is activated. Uh, we are in close uh, communication, synchronized with the Richmond County Emergency Operations Center and the State Emergency Operations Center as well. Uh, across our area today, we've already seen north of seven inches of rain fall between the downtown area and a good three to four, uh, most of the other areas through town. And we've had uh, quite a few calls for service uh, for flooded vehicles, stranded motorists, uh, things of that nature. We do expect to have a lull in, in, the, in the rain here a little bit, but I want to point out the stress of this. We're in a 24-hour event now. We've got to get through tomorrow this time. Uh, tonight um, is, is going to be uh, sporty, to say the least. Uh, the Helene is now a Category 3 hurricane. Uh, it's not expected to make landfall in Florida until somewhere around 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, if you look at the east side of that storm, the wind fields are, uh, extend out about 300 miles. And it's tracked to go currently um, across Atlanta. So we're, what, 200 miles from Atlanta, so we're in the upper right-hand quadrant, and that's not the best place to be. Um, we'd like to see it move a little faster out of here. We're, we're thinking it'll be uh, moving pretty good when it gets to here. Um, but we do expect another two to four inches to fall tonight. Um, the one thing I will say is make your preparations now, as Ms. Wilson said. Uh, get your family checked, your family, your friends, your, uh, your neighbors. Get off the streets. Uh, we need you to not be on the streets tonight. Uh, we do have a risk of some tornado activity. Uh, nocturnal activity for tornadoes is not good. Um, we want you to be home. We want everyone to be safe. Don't be on the roads if you don't have to. And I'm going to stress the point. Um, even though it may not hit you, don't get out on the road in the morning if you don't really have to because our, our professionals here have to get out and do damage assessments, windshield surveys. Uh, there will be some street closures. We'll probably end up having some power lines down. Uh, we'll be dealing with some tree limbs. Some trees will fall. We may have some trees on structures. Um, we're hoping that won't be widespread, but we've got to get this water off the road now, let it a chance to drain down. With this rain ban, we can get into a wall. We can hit the pool to drain down a little bit. Uh, we, we're ho hoping for that. Um, but don't get out in the morning until, until we get the assessments done. Our public works folks, police and fire, they'll be out in full force. We'll be here in the emergency operations center. Uh, maintaining close coordination with our partners. Uh, but I can't stress that enough. Um, if, if you do have to get out, and we say this all the time, and, and it gets, we just wish we didn't have to say it, do not drive through water. Drive around, go a different route. There are plenty of streets in our city that you can go around, but you don't have to drive through water. There are some construction sites in the city right now, uh, and those are taking some water to the road, uh, creating some issues. Uh, Robert Anderson will talk about that in a minute. Uh, if a barricade's up, don't drive around it. If a barricade's up and there's no water around it, that doesn't, just because the water has receded does not mean it's safe. They've got to go assess the street surface and make sure roads, cars can get on that track, on that road. So I'm gonna stress that enough to you and just, just 
let us get through this. We need the folks to get home, um, be safe, and we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. Oops, sorry. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. So good afternoon. My name is Robert Anderson. I'm the public works director. I, I'm going to echo a lot about what Harry said is, is don't drive through standing water, but don't drive around our barricades. We are closing streets off as soon as we can when we see any water. We don't want you to drive through any water. We actually really don't want you walking through any water. I spoke to somebody earlier today and I said, you don't know if there's a manhole cover off when you walk through that water. And if you can't see it, if you fall in that manhole, who knows where you're going to come out at. So we, we're here to protect your safety. We've had quite a bit of rain. We've got quite a bit of road flooding right now. As I came in, we were getting several more calls. There's two main roads that are closed right now. That is Whaley and Maine. It'll be closed the remainder of tonight. We will evaluate whether we will open it back up tomorrow based on the radar and what kind of rain we anticipate coming. The other one is, I'm gonna let DOT actually put the press release out on this, but that is gonna be Blossom Street uh, going into Casey off of Hugey Street. That is also going to remain closed. My understanding for BOT just a second ago, ago, the remainder of the evening. We have staff here all night long in Public Works that will be responding to the issues as they come in. You know, we don't need your help blocking roads. We need to make sure that we get to them and we can block them off safely. There's a lot of things we are, we are concerned about. One of them is going to be as the winds pick up. Some, sometime after midnight is going to be power lines wrapped in trees, power lines wrapped in maybe a flooded road. We don't need you walking in there and do that. We want to go home. We want our guys to go home safe. We want you to go home safe, and we want the public to go home safe. So if you'll help with us, stay off the roads, let our professionals do their job. That's what they're paid to do. They'll be here the remainder of the night. We will group back up tomorrow morning and make sure we get this town cleaned back up and safe for our citizens. Thank you. There. Oh, and, yes, and don't move our barricades either. We have seen that. If it's if they're up, they're up for a reason. You know, and we do have to evaluate structures sometimes to make sure the road can handle cars. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to reiterate one thing that you heard from everybody, and that's about the flooded waters. Always remember, turn around, don't drown. A little bit of water can cause you a lot of damage and cost you your life. But one thing I do want to stress is that, you know, these type of incidents, it can cause a lot of grave danger at your home. So if you got down power lines, if you lose your power, always remember, have a flashlight. We don't, we don't stretch it to use candles. You know, people fall asleep with candles on, you burn your house down. So make sure you got flashlights rather than just burning candles, okay? Also, just, just make sure if you do have down power lines, call Dominion. But if they are arcing, make sure you dial 911 to get us activated, get us on the way. And always assume that a down power line is live. You don't know if it's live or not. So just assume that, that it is live. And that way you can keep your family safe. So there's not a whole lot more I can add to others than say that, that we're prepared, we're ready for any areas that get flooded. We've got a response team ready, all fire, our firefighters are ready. And we're gonna work in conjunction with the police department to make those rescues if, if necessary. So if you get some, if you see somebody in that situation, call us immediately. Again, do not drive through water because you don't know how deep it is. And I would tell you from personal experience that we even had a firefighter fall in one of the manholes one time. So it can happen to anybody, but we, won't, we do not want to happen to you. So be safe, always just be aware of what's going on, and then hopefully we can get through this thing together. So I think you all heard us reiterate, reiterate, reiter reiterate to um, be safe, watch out for each other, try to get home if you can as soon as possible outside of, out, out of the rain and the elements, and to please, please use caution. If you do have to be out, do not go again, you know, beyond barricades. If you see water, stop, turn around, uh, standing water. Um, I will add that, as with uh, Richland County, um, Administrator Leonardo Brown um, gathered many of us yesterday um, on a Zoom call with many of the schools and colleges, universities, other entities. So everyone is really on lockstep, knowing that parents need the same information. Our citizens all need the same information. We will all be working on limited operations tomorrow, um, employing um, remote 
um, or alternative work schedules for non-essential staff that can still do some work um, in that way. But most, of course, of all of all of our essential employees will be working and in the field to keep our community safe. Um, in addition to that, I think most, if not all, of the schools, public and private universities have all decided to either close or be on virtual platforms. So the, the story around all of this is that we as a community want to keep everyone safe and at home as much as possible. For those unsheltered members of our community, we are currently in the process now of opening our Rapid Shelter Overflow Center so that those individuals can also have um, the comfort of being in a safe environment outside of the rain and the elements. And so hopefully if by six o'clock, if not before, we will begin the process of transporting them to the Rapid Shelter Overflow um, with our wonderful partners at the Comet. Um, the Salvation Army will help with us to feed them and make sure that they're taken care of through the evening.